scorpions. Uh, this first, uh, uh, the first segment is a cholesterol in this case, and this is the second one, so which is a modified and it's called pedipulp. So pedipulp in this case uh, is, uh, is not used for stinging, it is for, gra for grasping things. Uh, it uses them to more like hands. Uh, it can capture things and grab things uh, in, in the pedipulp. Uh, so the stingers usually are the last segments, uh, last segments uh, which are used for uh, as the reproductive organs, or in this case, actually uses it to kind of protect itself. Uh, so they don't always sting. Some of them actually are not known to sting. People actually keep them with them and actually play with them all the time as if they're pets. So uh, they look pretty nice too. Some of them are actually very nice colored ones. Uh, and then um, fairly big. Those are the ones that kind of scare people. Uh, but they, most of them are actually harmless. They actually really don't uh, uh, sting, but the ones that sting, their sting is really, really painful. I mean, people who have been stung by scorpions, anybody had that experience here? No. So the people who have gone through that experience, it's very, very painful. It's not as painful as the, the jellyfish, but it is less than that. No. People say, that jellyfish sting is probably the worst one that they have experienced in their life. It's very you, painful too. It actually makes the jellyfish sting actually makes you a little sick. I don't know about scorpions. Scorpions. Yeah. Yeah. So scorpions are more useful than scorpions you. can kill you depending on how much they sting. How many sting? They, they, that's very small. Um, it's just painful. They're not. They're not snakes. So black scorpions. What is, what um, is it that they? Like, there, there are some. That is poisonous. Sure. Is it is it venom? Or? They have venom, that's right. It's a small note. They, they have actually different forms of uh, uh, venoms. Different insects have different, like even ants have that, right? Or ants have a very, uh, it's, they, uh, ants venom, or it's uh, just a chemical, it's an acid, it's a formic acid. So formic acid, when it goes in the body, just uh, burns. So, you know, for like fire ants. So it, it burns and actually burns for days. Uh, because formic acid is not, uh, easily uh, dissolvable in the body. So body reacts to it uh, in the form of immune system, so it becomes uh, pretty swollen and continues to pain and hurt and burn for, I, for days. I got bit by a fire ant. Like, fire ant, fire yeah. when I was a little young. They're very, very... You still remember that. Yeah, they're very painful. And my, I got bit on my knee, oh, on my knee, and my knee was just swollen and it pain. It's like fire and stuff, it's like fire. Yeah, it is. It is fire-like. Uh, we do have actually a lot of fire ants here in this area too. Um, so um, it, I think it's mostly it's it's not the formic acid that is actually that uh, that poisonous. It's our body's own response to it because body really does not develop any immunity against it. So if you are if you are you know um, had that experience once and you actually go through the same experience uh, and you put your foot again on on an, an ant pile again. So it will uh, hurt I, again the second time. I didn't put my foot on an ant pile. As I, was, I was in uh, elementary school and I was outside playing and I was sitting in the grass and mm -hmm. I just a couple, just like next to that, I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't sitting near like an ant pile or nothing like that. It's just there were some that just rolled in the grass and everything like that. And some just came up on my knee and just bit me. So, just one? Uh, probably about three. Okay. Top, so. so that's three times more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anybody else who has a bad experience with the ants? In this area? Oh, we had a lot. Everybody 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 had so we had a but giant it's, fire it's not known that you know, people actually died from uh, ant bites. You know, even though sometimes actually you get you know, pretty badly uh, hurt by that, but it's not, not, it's not very well known that actually you die from, at least I haven't heard that. It's Somebody just, died because be, of it's just being very tender and you just don't want to touch it. It's just, you just don't want to do nothing. You just want to just sit there and just... Just wait for yeah. four, five, six days. Yeah. Anybody had an experience with the spiders, spider bites? Yeah. My brother got bit by a black widow on his head when he was when he was like in middle school, yeah. and it just like it just basically it didn't really well. It wasn't a black widow. It was like a 
some type of spider. It's like a brown spider or something like that. And he got bit on the top of his head when he was in school. And it just completely made him have like a bald spot on his head. But he had to use like some type of chemical from a derm uh, chemical kit from shampoo to a dermatologist to like kill the yeah, people have a lot of different experiences. Um, I actually knew somebody who was uh, uh, who had that experience with some spider. You know, was was stung by a, a spider, and actually her immune system was messed up completely. She had to get treatment for her immune system because because the, the problem with these uh, types of chemicals is that our body is not familiar with them, and our immune system does not recognize those. So it you know it can become a big problem for the immune system. Otherwise, most of the time, you know, immune system can take care of those things. For example, if you got um, you know stung by a bee, and next time you, you you actually get stung by the same type of bee, then your body should be ready for that. And this is why immune system is there. At least your uh, adaptive system is designed for that purpose. But these chemicals are so foreign chemicals that body really does not create any immunity. I can't really agree with you on that because I just went home and looked at my medical records and I'm highly allergic to like these things and it's like, yeah. so I that's can't really agree with you on that. I mean, because I'm that again is, you know, you, that your immune system is messed up. Yeah. Um, so that immune system uh, uh, is compromised and Basically, there's no protection inside the body. And a lot of time, actually, our immune system, in case of allergies, allergies are your own immune system is turning against yourself. All those autoimmune diseases are, again, you know, your own immune system turning against yourself and causing damage. It's not the disease that really does that. How does, that, how does it happen, like, my stepdad's allergic to shrimp, but, like, he used to eat shrimp and, like, shellfish all the time. Yeah, you know, because the shellfish has you know proteins in it. So what you eat in in shrimp is mostly proteins and some carbohydrates and some some um, some lipids. So a lot of time when you consume those, um, you know you basically are predisposed to that. You know you you have it in your genes that you know it does not get recognized by your immune system. So when immune system does not recognize it, then it either, you know it never ignores it. Uh, what it will do is actually it will cause, it will try to control it. So when it is not able to control it, then it will actually hurt it. Yeah. Um, so for example, the people who are allergic to shellfish or nice. pollens, uh, their immune cells like uh, basophils and other types of cells, they secrete chemicals. They, they produce pharmacological chemicals on them, um, like uh, histamines, for example, when people break out on things. Um, and uh, when swelling takes place, those cells actually try to control it. And when they try to control it and are not able to do it, then uh, it causes a bigger problem than the allergen by itself. So, and I know we gotta get back to the lesson, but so it's like me and nuts. I'm highly, I'm mm -hmm. in black, the nuts too. Right. I ate a whole hell of a lot of nuts when I was like younger, mm -hmm. you know, like from everything. And then now it's like, I'm completely deadly allergic to a lot of Well, the immune system probably was not awake at that time. So once you okay. woke up, you can become allergic later on. Uh, so you, even though you are, in a way, through your genes, you are predisposed to those. You know, you are, um, you you have some mutations in your genes that are part of the immune system. You know, immune system works in a very different way because it's usually the same genes that are present in everybody. But those genes get modified by themselves. And that's how you have so many types of genes in your body and you are protected against so many different things. Uh, but sometimes when those genes are mutated that you inherit from your parents, um, then you basically has, have no immunity left in your body. So, or you are allergic to one thing because your immune system does not know how to control it. It's or you're allergic to a group of things. It's the second month because my mom is allergic to shellfish and mm -hmm. I So you got it from her. Yeah. So now you can actually give it to your children too. I don't know so, about that. <laughs> so you have to have the, your partner screen and see you know, if that person is not allergic to things. Um, so the last group, um, which is a group of uh, deuterostomes, so the second group, so all others that we have covered were from the first group. All of them were protostomes. And this group are, um, they consist of those organisms that are deuterostomes. 
So, um, and one group that we're going to talk about today is uh, echinoderms belonging to phy phylum um, echinodermata. Those are invertebrates that are sea stars, urchins, cucumbers, sand dollars. They have two types of symmetry in their body. When they are young, at that time, they have bilateral symmetry in their body. The larvae have bilateral symmetry and their adults have radial symmetry in the body. So they are different, in different stages of life, they show different types of symmetry. They are, they are also made of exoskeleton, so their exoskeleton is composed of uh, calcium-rich plates, which, are, which have, um, in some cases, spines on them too, that we saw in sea stars yesterday. Uh, and then uh, they do have a central nerve ring and branches, so they have a little bit more advanced type of nervous system than what we have seen so far. For their locomotion, they use jet propulsion, which is based on some internal tubes and internal kind of connected tubes that are filled with water. So they soak water, they fill their body with them, and then they help to kind of locomote, to move with the help of that water that is present in their body. So that gives them some sort of a hydrostatic pressure inside the body. Most of them actually, um, they can swim, but they can also crawl on the surface. You know, sea star, for example, crawls on the surface all the time. Can swim, swim as well, freely, but the way it feeds is actually by this, uh, sitting on top of that organism or its prey, and then feed uh, by kind of uh, screening some of their um, uh, digestive juice from their body and part of their digestive system actually goes and suck the juice from, from their prey. So they digest food on the outside and then, um, then kind of absorb it in their body. So we saw that just today, so I'm not going to go through that um, again. Um, these are some of the examples. These ones are called sea apples. Actually, I've never seen a sea apple before, so these look uh, very nice and pretty. Most of them are actually very colorful. They are very bright and very attractive in colors. And they are not really that innocent, even though they are very attractive in colors, but they, they attack and they kill also. Um, the sea star uh, that has exoskeleton, uh, you know, calcium carbonate exoskeleton, has spines that actually help them to be protected. Um, so not See, you know, even though they have some enemies, they have some predators, but they don't have too many predators. Uh, sea stars are called as the vultures because they are, uh, they are not decomposers, but they are the ones actually that will clean out any debris, any dead animal, they will just kind of you know, wipe them very quickly. They will all accumulate around them just like the vultures and they will digest the parts of their body and only the bones will be left after some period of time. Um, they have, um, their, their arms have uh, uh, eye spots on them that help them to sense light. Um, they have two feet that help them to actually kind of attach to the things. Two feet are more like, you know, those suction cups. They can attach themselves with the, with the water pressure in them. With the suction of the water, they can actually attach and move that way. Um, so I want to show you this. this a very short video. Don't they go through uh, regeneration too? They can regenerate, that's right. You know, even if you cut maybe one third of part of their body, they can regenerate. Or they can live without it. So they can regenerate to some extent. If you cut one arm, so they will regenerate to make the length of the arm again. Uh, in other cases, they can just live like that without really any kind of uh, effect on their life. This is how they digest. Like an advancing army, the sea stars move into position, slowly but surely working their way up toward their victims. The muscles cannot run or fight. All they can do is hide within their shells as their killers crawl over their bodies. Sensory tube feet sweep over the tightly packed mass of shells, searching for any gap in the muscle's defenses. Settling on its victim, 
the sea star hunkers down and begins its attack. A miniature camera tucked within the muscle shell gives us the first look ever at the carnage that unfolds here every day. Once the tube feet have physically breached the muscle's defensive line, the sea star's translucent stomach begins the final assault. The animal actually pushes its stomach inside the muscle's shell, unfolding like a fatal flower. The stomach unleashes a volley of chemical weapons, digestive juices that dissolve the muscle's soft pink flesh. All that's left is a nutrient-rich soup, a broth that's quickly absorbed by the sea star. Having assimilated the muscle, the sea star stomach pulls away. And the animal moves on, leaving behind an empty shell. Without the benefit of speed, brains, or brawn, sea stars are amazingly successful predators. So this is what they do. This is, they actually kind of insert part of their stomach inside their prey, which is mostly these type of uh, uh, shelled um, animals, like clams and, uh, and mussels and, and other Organisms We're going like to that. notice these lovable creatures displaying some very disturbing behavior. was left was that they can reproduce sexually as well as asexually. So uh, they release their eggs and sperms at the same time in the water that get fertilized and from there the tiny baby um, uh, starfish hatch out. They actually spend their life in two different forms. The larvae go through complete metamorphosis and become adults. And then they can also continue to change later on a uh, little bit as well. All right, that kind of completes the chapter, chapter 48.